Today I will be talking about a triple band hybridization coherent perfect absorber based on graphene metamaterial. And here's the cited work. So why what's the importance of graphene? So graphene is widely used in the design of metamaterials. Metamaterials can be understood as arrays of artificial atoms or nanoparticles not seen in nature and with negative refractive uh, index so refractive uh, indices so graphene is is an extremely thin material and we can think of it as an as an ultra thin film which has a certain equivalent dielectric constant uh, presented here as epsilon g 1 plus i sigma over omega epsilon naught b where epsilon naught and omega respectively represent the dielectric constant of the vacuum and the frequency of the incident wave with b represents the thickness of graphene according to this equation here n equals to the square root of these guys the refractive index of graphene can be obtained where epsilon g is the equivalent dielectric constant and mu g is the chemical potential. In this equation we can know that conductivity affects the dielectric constant of graphene films. In addition the electrical conductivity will directly affect the characteristics of the surface plasmon polarization SPP excited by the graphene. And here we have the proposed structure. The proposed structure is a tri-band graphene structure composed of a single layer of graphene, concentric triple ring array. Right here we can see the array of, of nano rings. And a metallic mirror separated by silicon dioxide, glass. And the perfect electrical conductor under it. The ion gel but this ion gel was not considered in the calculations and so we did not worry about that and I also couldn't find or couldn't add the material into FDTD and so we have to analyze some properties that happen with with um, with with this graphene here the magnetic resonance phenomena and the strong near field that can happen. So the working principle of this, um, what we're going to call a, now a metamaterial perfect absorber, the working principle of this reflective MPA can be understood as follows. When the electromagnetic wave illuminates the device, the SPP is excited on the top graphene layer in the redundant energy in the absorber that was reflected by the bottom piece EC mirror, resulting in strong magnetic resonance. It is known from the properties of SPP that the SPP excited by the MPA will change the direction of energy propagation, thereby achieving the loss of this energy at the surface without reflection. Um, also, this so we're gonna this, this structure works by sandwiching right sandwiching an insulator between two metallic layers to use and then to use the magnetic resonance that results from this between the top and bottom metallic layers the graphene based MPA operate based on the plasmonic resonances that are caused because if because of the incident light illuminates the device, anti-parallel currents are excited on both the top graphene layer and the bottom metallic mirror. Since the graphene and the and the silicon dioxide mirror are so close, a strong coupling effect produces an extreme strong near fields that may be dissipated by the lossy graphene and mm, we will see I will show you later on where I think I might have caught this very strong near field. Uh, and it produced a crash in the simulation. Let me go to the FDT to show you. So here is our, here is the, the structure. 
with my mesh over over the four I, I, I simplified I reduce it to four rings well um, four times three 12 rings uh, we have a profile monitor acting on this guy only we have um, the movie monitor to record what happens uh, this monitor is in the 2D Y normal um, we have also another DFT monitors to capture the electric fields the magnetic fields and so yeah so now we can see uh, the simulation playing out so here we have the the incident light is being reflected by most of the of the uh, of the gold and then it bounces back up from the PS PEC um, not all of it is reflected out and so we see this nice oscillation happening back and forth where now we have um, this light that has been entrapped it's been captured here and we can see how it oscillates back and forth so here I'll show you some of the the of what the monitors uh, recording so first the electric field data as a function of position and frequency slash wavelength so we see this is this is the monitor that's right above the source where all of that initial uh, first um, uh, wave of electromagnetic wave was bounced back we see that it's highly uh, energetic here then we have the magnetic field it's the complete opposite it's a, it's a mellow a blue here we have the transmission as a function of frequency or wavelength interesting happening there and now we have the far field which looks a little bit like a Rorschach test to me um, interesting and well this this is of course from from another monitor now that it's uh, recording what's happening inside the substrates or inside the layers of silicon dioxide uh, then we have the the um, this is the transmission function of frequency so there's a drop and then things starts going up so here is the unusual crash since the paper because it says that the 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 rings are separated by gold as well so what i did here is i placed the the gold along with the rings and there was an unusual crash but we can see that some something happens between the this layer and the the silicon dioxide but of course speculations so we see the light comes in through the rings only and then it starts you know oscillating back and forth as before not all of it can can escape because here the gold is pretty strong then it starts dissipating a little bit then we don't expect anything else to happen and then this happens then we have a strong interaction and simulation crashes I really don't know how to explain it but it's there then I also uh, simulated it simulated uh, the electric field patterns in the three concentric graphene nanorings but in this case just in one of them and we'll see how it plays out And this was actually one of the images that were um, proposed, uh, sorry, that were published along with the paper. 
So, yeah. Then we can see here again what happens there. We have the the electric field playing out like this, the magnetic field. And this is the far field, which I find very interesting to look at. Thank you.